In this video we will talk about three topics. Is my dog at risk for cancer? What kinds of cancer are most common in dogs? What signs should I watch for? Is my dog at risk for cancer? The answer is yes. Dogs are susceptible to many of the same cancers that affect people. For example, dogs are the only non-human species who can get prostate cancer. According to the National Cancer Institute, approximately 6 million new cancer diagnoses are made in dogs each year. Since not all pets receive medical care or a definitive cancer diagnosis, this number likely would rise if every pet saw a veterinarian annually. Taking this into consideration, the Veterinary Cancer Society estimates one in four dogs will develop cancer at some point, and almost 50% of dogs over age 10 will develop cancer. Fortunately, half of all canine cancers are treatable if caught early enough, and new treatments are continuously being researched. What kinds of cancer are most common in dogs? Cancer can take many forms and can affect the blood, bone, or body tissues. An accurate diagnosis is critical to provide the most appropriate treatment and the best prognosis. Dogs fall victim to the following types of canine cancers. Lymphoma is one of the most common cancers seen in dogs. Accounting for 20% of all canine cancers, dogs are two to five times more likely than people to develop lymphoma, which can affect any breed at any age. Lymphoma appears most often as swollen lymph nodes under the jaw, in front of the shoulders, or behind the knees. Occasionally, lymphoma may attack lymph nodes in the chest or abdomen, which makes breathing difficult or causes vomiting and diarrhea. Lymphoma is generally considered treatable, depending on the type, and multidrug chemotherapy gives favorable results. Dogs who respond well to chemotherapy usually enjoy a good quality of life for the next 12 to 18 months of remission. Most commonly affected breed is Golden Retriever. This picture show an example of lymphoma. Mast cell tumors. Mast cell tumors typically form on the skin, can vary from relatively benign to extremely aggressive, and often spread to other parts of the body. Mast cells are immune cells associated with allergies and usually are easily identified with a fine needle aspirate. A pet suffering from a mast cell tumor often will show signs of vomiting, diarrhea, and loss of appetite. Surgery is required to excise the entire mast cell tumor. Often, chemotherapy and radiation therapy are also indicated for severe grades of tumor. The most commonly affected breeds are boxers and bulldogs. These picture shoe examples of mast cell tumors. Osteosarcoma. Osteosarcoma is the most common bone cancer in dogs, occurring most frequently in large and giant breeds. Osteosarcoma routinely attacks the long bones in the limbs but can affect any bone and progresses rapidly, spreading to the lungs, lymph nodes, and other bones. Pet owners notice swelling, lameness, or pain in the affected limb in the beginning stages. Since this disease is so aggressive and spreads extremely rapidly, the recommended course of treatment often is amputation of the affected limb, followed by chemotherapy to treat metastases. Sadly, fewer than 10% of dogs who undergo this gold standard treatment live longer than three years. Most commonly affected breeds are Great Danes, Irish Wolfhounds, Mastiffs. These picture shows examples of canine osteosarcoma. Melanoma. Melanoma is one of the most common oral cancers seen in dogs and frequently is seen in breeds with dark tongues and gums. These tumors are composed of darkly pigmented cells and can be found anywhere on the body. A malignant melanoma that develops in the oral cavity often has spread throughout the body by the time it's first noticed and, unfortunately, is incurable. Complete surgical removal is difficult, radiation therapy is ineffective against metastasized cells, and chemotherapy is ineffective against this type of cancer. Melanoma appears to respond to immune-based therapies, and several treatments are under development. Most commonly affected breeds are Doberman Pinschers, Chow Chows, Scottish Terriers, and Standard and Miniature Schnauzers. These pictures show examples of canine melanoma. Mammary gland carcinomas. Mammary gland carcinomas are the most common tumors in unspayed female dogs, but often are overlooked since they usually appear as small nodules around the nipple. Unfortunately, the nodule may quickly grow into a large painful tumor that can ulcerate and become an open wound. Approximately 50% of these tumors are malignant, but they can be cured with surgical removal if the cancer has not metastasized. 
50% of malignant masses will be fatal. Spaying a dog before her first heat cycle significantly decreases the mammary cancer risk. Most commonly affected are older, unspayed females of every breed. These pictures show an examples of mammary gland carcinoma in dogs. Hemangiosarcoma. Hemangiosarcoma is a form of cancer that develops from cells that line the blood vessels, most commonly attacking the spleen, but also the liver, heart, and skin. Dogs with splenic tumors seldom display signs of illness until the tumor ruptures, and they go into shock caused by extreme blood loss, with pale gums, sudden weakness, and labored breathing. Emergency surgery is required to stem the blood loss, followed by chemotherapy. Sadly, this disease rarely gives warning signals until it has progressed into the later stages, and treatment often is too late. Most commonly affected breeds are Golden Retrievers, German Shepherds, Portuguese Water Dogs, Sky Terriers. This picture show him angiosarcoma of the skin in a 7-year-old Bullmastiff. What signs should I watch for? As with any disease, early detection is critical for the best outcome. Keep an eye out for these early warning signs of cancer in your dog. Abnormal or rapidly growing swellings. SARS that do not heal. Loss of appetite and weight loss. Bleeding or discharge from body openings. Difficulty eating, swallowing, or breathing. Lameness. Difficulty urinating or defecating. While cancer is a terrifying diagnosis for your beloved pet, many new treatments look promising. Consider enrolling your pet in a clinical trial, so her cancer diagnosis may lead to another pet's cure. For more details check the reference link in the description. If you found this video helpful, support us with like and subscribe. Thank you for your listening. Goodbye.